Okay, I'm here today with Sam from D3 Cabinets, and we're gonna run around his factory and show you some of the awesome lean improvements. Where do you think you wanna start? Let's start at the, uh, the back, the material storage. All right, done deal, let's go. This allows us to um, double check the material as it comes in from uh, the uh, supplier. So we can quickly double check and say, yep, that's the right stuff. Or if we have a roll of edge tape, we can confirm the edge tape color is correct. And then we do the same thing right before we're going to cut it uh, so to make sure that it's exactly the material. Uh, this started because we have uh, some of our pre finished veneers like Shinoki. Um, they're all the same material, but different color tones, different dye lots. So we wanted to make sure that we have a control sample uh, and that they're also dated as well. So we know how old the sample is and if we need to update it, uh, then we can do that. All right, we're going to check out another improvement. What's let's next? Let's head to the paint shop. The paint shop. So one of the uh, improvements in the paint shop that we made are the li these little uh, subway counters. Uh, we got a whole pack of them from Amazon for like 20 bucks. So we put them all throughout the shop. And uh, what we do is uh, we, we're um, counting the number of faces we're spraying. And just quickly there, you know, as we spray, they just hit the button. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to write anything down. And then at the end of the day, um, we can just drop that in our, uh, in our software. And uh, they've hung it from a magnet on the ceiling so that it's uh, accessible when they're pulling their guns and getting everything ready. Jeez. We're exploring improvements at D3 <laughs> with Sam. Let's go find another one. Okay, so in the finished department, how many times have you held the little strainer and poured? Uh, we decided to eliminate that with the little bracket. This fits right over and holds the strainer. So we can now we can two-hand pour. We have more control. And, and uh, we're measuring on the scale so we can get really accurate. Awesome. What's that? With thinners, uh, why would you carry a giant uh, five-gallon and try and tip it? Uh, so we've designed this tipping device where you can go all the way over and really accurately pour um, from there to get your solvent just perfect. Love it. And then same thing over here for the five gallons when we mix our primer, we can hold that there. And we have this measuring stick that we've etched uh, so we can just so we can just put it right in the bottom of the can. No need to weigh it, no need to measure. Use your head, not your wallet. Absolutely. This is just a piece of closet rock. Okay, so Sam's gonna tell us some clever flow through his edge banding cell is that right yeah that's right so um so we position the cnc and the outfeed of the cnc quite close to the edge bander and my rule in my shop is no cabinet parts in carts ever so it comes right off the uh, conveyor here goes onto this buffer conveyor and then it immediately gets edged oh yeah i see okay and so then... flow like this through the machine comes back on the return conveyor from the return conveyor, it heads over to the dowel machine. From the dowel machine, you get split into our buffer before sorting. So we can have two pitches at a time in sorting before it hits the sorting lines. And then this is the other side of the sorting rack where we've got the assembly through the case clamp, comes out of the case clamp, right into a strapping machine, right onto this table. That's pretty good, Sam. So lean is about humans, uh, and we don't want to struggle, we don't want to hurt our backs. So when cabinets come off uh, the clamp and get all wrapped, they go straight on the table here, down to this end, and then we just Put our feet here, give it a stop, and we put the cabinet onto the floor like that. So we don't lift anything from here, it goes straight onto a pallet, ready to ship. So now you've seen the flow. We're gonna look at one of the machines that Sam has done an amazing job at with the principle of where the question is, the answer should be. Let's go. So the Edge Bander, as I'm sure we all know, is the most complicated <laughs> machine that many of us have. 
um, and is also the most temperamental. So bringing on new employees, it's very uh, nerve-wracking to hand them the machine. So what we've done is we've gone through each working unit here and we've made a video explaining how it works, what it does. Scan the QR code for this. That's right. Scan the QR code for that. Scan the QR code for that. And every single station has a QR code available to the operator. That's Amazing. right. And then they're all videos and we've made uh, printouts in a book here. So it's quick and easy reference if someone doesn't have their phone on them. Uh, yeah, it's been awesome. We can get totally green operators to just come in and run the machine. Look at this, not one single missed item on this entire piece of equipment. And it never hurts to organize your tools. This, Sam, is a 10 out of 10. Thank you, thank you. We all love edge banding storage, so let's take a look at what Sam came up with for this. It's always a problem. Um, what we've realized is that one of these binder clips, um, I think the medium size, oh. is the exact width of normal tape. Oh, that's brilliant. So instead of taping all the time and having bits of tape everywhere, and it's, it's a struggle, it's awful. So we just use the binder clip, and then each shelf, we have a dedicated number of slots for each color, and each shelf has the reorder position where we have our Kanban card, which triggers ordering edge tape. Beautiful. Okay, so for everybody who's put masking tape all over every edge banding in the world, <laughs> oh my God, this is huge. Large binder clip. And you can see it right here on the machine itself. So we know what roll is actually on the machine. So good. Uh, you ever look for tools around your shop? Not Sam. Pretty cool. So we did this a long time ago with uh, organizing all the commonly used tools. You can see though, it doesn't quite work because there's some things missing. What we found is our shop's 100 feet long. So when I'm at the back working on a dust collector and I need a screwdriver, I gotta come all the way here to get it. What we've done over here is we've turned all of that into a mobile cart. So on the cart, we've got all of our normal tools that we use. We've got a label printer. We've got the normal screws that we use, hooks. Uh, we've got uh, um, different tools for cutting Kaizen foam. It's all on the assembly cart. So Henry Ford once said, no machine in a factory for, should be even one inch further away from the operator than it needs to be, but not one inch too close. And this man right here has got building a cell down to an art. It's amazing. Yep. So uh, drawers come to the cell. Um, all of our uh, pre-sorted components are here with their uh, labels and we sort in sides and uh, front and back and bottoms below. Um, we assemble it right here. We can clean the edges, we can uh, uh, clean files if we need. We've got our glue, we've got our blocks, everything where it needs to be. Then we put it in the clamp. After it goes in the clamp for five minutes, we have all of the screws, we have the clips, we have the drills all right in front of the operator. And you have the SOP right in front of the You've operator. Got it. Yep. That's how we do it. So when the drawers are complete, we uh, put them in these carts. The carts are angled so we can s sort more drawers into a smaller footprint of carts. And we also mount the fronts here at this stage. So when it gets out to the, uh, the cabinet assembly cell, the, the drawer just goes right in, the front's on, it's all done. So just with Lean, uh, and I want to energize and educate my team, um, every time I, I read a book and I like it, I'll buy another one and I'll put it in here. Uh, for the We want people to... Uh, take charge and educate themselves uh, Sarah, oh my god okay best improvement in the entire factory this is the second aha uh -huh, uh, like haha -ha moment i've had today where people are <laughs> at least you got a sense of humor at work check this out so when we really struggled introducing the team to the concept of one piece flow and not batching and making stacks of parts and carts everywhere and when we introduced the uh the flow of the cabinet uh parts i took out 25 carts from my shop nice. 25 carts and uh, we make the sign and it's kind of zero days since incident uh, we're at 15 our record is 40 um <laughs> but uh, induced rage. yeah it's it's uh kind of a funny reminder that uh you know it's we're we're on the right track but 
We can still slip okay, up. So I just need to find a, a, something to stand on so I don't feel so <laughs> tiny beside you. But Sam is going to tell us a little bit about what you have learned in your lean journey over the past, how long have you been doing this crazy thing? Two years. Only two years? Yeah. Oh, dude, you're flying. Okay, tell us, tell us, give us some. <laughs> so Sam's someone asked notes. me, someone asked me recently for you know um, some resources about lean, and they, they wanted some templates. And I said, yeah, I can give you that stuff, but it's not really about that. This is a, a commitment uh, at the very top level of the company. Um, the CEO has to be totally involved. You know, the CEO has to clean the bathroom. He has to um, do everything that his employees do and everything he's expecting of them, and demonstrate to them. Uh, how it's supposed to work. It never ends. There's always improvements. Even something that we just made yesterday and we think it's great. Hey, tomorrow, if we find a better way, I am for sure ripping it all apart and doing it again. Um, and I think the other, the, the final thing that's really key is really understanding that that one piece flow, the idea that um, anytime there's you know a batch of work, that's inferior to having parts rolling off the assembly line continuously. Um, we've done one piece flow and we've implemented lean now for, like I said, two years with the same number of people. We've doubled our throughput. This is probably our number one most difficult thing to teach people on the machine side is everybody asks us, why is your robot only sanding one door at a time? And I'm like, well, it's single piece flow. And it's like, <laughs> it's hard to explain to people. And you're two years in, we just did the tour. So make sure everybody watches this video to see his cabinet <laughs> assembly line because it is killer yeah we've great got a, job thanks we've got our channel uh d3 does lean on youtube and uh, we post there frequently and i'll be doing a, a couple uh, we post a lot of shorts i'll be doing some longer form videos really soon. the thing about lean is it's all about the empowerment of your team um, as an owner i have an idea of how i want something done um, i have to bite my tongue a lot and i have to let my team figure out what they want to do and how they want to do it and if it's wrong hey we'll fix it but the the idea is coming from them we just had a, um, a, a piece of equipment that we'd be modifying and i sent my guy a youtube video and said this is what i want it to look like and then two days later they've built the thing and they can show me the prototype and it's not perfect but it's theirs they made it themselves and they're really proud of that so that's a really key part of the lean puzzle tell me that again <laughs> okay so, uh, you know, like this video, um, I, it took a long time for the team to understand what I was trying to do. Um, there's buy-in in the morning meetings is very difficult. And even how, now it's a struggle. How long did you preach lean before that penny dropped? 12 to 18 months before people fully were like, oh, this isn't going away. And this just, just isn't one of his uh, crazy ideas. Um, and yeah, this is something we're going to do every day. And I don't care how busy we are. We are stopping, we're having our morning meeting, then we're gonna do half an hour of improvements every day, hell or high water, it's gonna happen. Um, and that just takes a long time. The key is consistency. If you stop, even for one day, the so, team goes, oh, it's not that important, and it's gone. Awesome, well, thank you for the tour today. My it was pleasure. great hanging out for Absolutely. the day. Absolutely.